Right. Good afternoon, everybody, and thank you for coming. Um, the reason I'm standing up is just because of this chair. It's not because of uh, any other reason, which it might have been. Um, can I welcome members and the viewing public to this meeting of the City Council, which is being held during a period of national mourning following the death of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. And we'll, I'm now going to ask the Director of Legal and Governance to announce the housekeeping uh, arrangements. Thank you, Gillian. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Please can I request members of the public to familiarise themselves with the fire safety and evacuation notices displayed in the public gallery. In the event of the evacuation signal sounding, please take instruction from the security attendants who will be in attendance throughout the meeting. Can I request everyone to switch mobile devices to silent mode so as not to disturb the conduct of the meeting? The meeting today will be webcast and the recording will also be available for people to view later through the Council's website. It's also possible that Sheffield Live TV will record and rebroadcast this meeting. Photography, video and sound recording of the meeting is permitted, but the Lord Mayor does have discretion to withdraw or suspend this permission if the recording is disrupting the conduct of the meeting or is being undertaken in a manner which could capture personal information or if a member of the public participating objects to being recorded. For safety reasons, can I request that recording equipment is not held over the balcony? Um, and finally, although there are no longer any specific COVID safety measures to adhere to, individuals are very welcome to wear a face covering within the chamber. Thank you. I should now conclude these housekeeping announcements by stating that in order to reflect the fact that we are in a national period of mourning, there are going to be several changes to how this meeting is to be conducted. Members of the public have not been invited to present petitions or ask questions under item four on the agenda. By that we mean we have not asked them to ask them in person we have taken written questions and written petitions and written answers and uh, written acknowledgements of the petitions and where they will go next are being sent to those who have put them in and we will also make sure that they are included on the minutes of this meeting so that they are publicly available as they would be if they had been given in person. Members will not be provided with an opportunity to ask supplementary questions under item 5. The four notices of motion at items 6 to 9 are to be withdrawn from consideration and there will be an urgent item of business added to the agenda to consider a notice of motion regarding the passing of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth the second. So we are now going to have a minute's silence for Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. Will you all please stand?
Thank you, everybody. Council Procedure Rule 26 states that an item of business may be considered at a meeting of the Council as a matter of urgency where it has not been possible to give five clear working days notice. This can happen on the recommendation of the Chair, but the reason for such urgency must be recorded in the minutes. It is proposed that a notice of motion regarding the passing of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II is considered as an urgent item of business at today's council meeting. The Queen died after the agenda for this meeting had been published. The notice of motion was circulated to members of the council yesterday and has now been published on the council's website. Copies of the motion are available in the venue. It is proposed that this urgent item be considered at this point in the proceedings. Is that agreed? Thank you. Right. We are going to ask one speaker from each group to speak, which, which excludes the proposer and seconder. So overall, there will be two speakers from the Labour group, two speakers from the Lib Dem group, one from the Green group, and one from the Conservative group. So with that, I'm going to call on Councillor Terry Fox to move the motion. Terry, you have up to three minutes, but I'm going to be giving leeway. Thank, thank you, Lord Mayor. Obviously, it's with great sadness um, that the country um, mourns the death of the head of our country, our Commonwealth, and a great leader across the old world. Lord Mayor, when I got the message that London Bridge had fallen, I was at a young people's event um, called Inspire, just across the way, the McCure. And we'd had a number of conversations, as would be expected, certainly from the Queen's Platinum Jubilee, which blew me away in Norfolk Park with the 20,000 plus people that came through there, the variety of ages that came to celebrate the Queen's 70 years of reign. Lord Mayor, once... I think the country had taken the news in that we had lost our head of state. We'd lost someone who had been with us. Certainly in my lifetime, I have never known any other monarch. I've never known any other head of state who has been a permanent fixture through events, disasters, celebrations and commiserations. And the Queen has always conducted herself with a decorum that fitted the period of mourning that is going on within this country. Lord Mayor, I have to say that since that time I have constantly gone downstairs to the lobby to talk to people in, in their vast numbers who have come to sign the book of condolence and to listen to their comments of a anchor, a inner strength, people who felt that they've never even come into contact with the Queen but felt a personal affiliation to her. There is a sense, I believe, across this city of deep sadness, a era of a new chapter as we pass on to King Charles III and how that process has been so perfect in the way that that has been shown in that window front to the world of 
the outpouring of grief uh, by all members of the public. Lord Mayor, after Sunday's proclamation, myself and a number of comrades went down to the Peace Gardens where they lay off the flowers on the um, grass. And just reading those comments was absolutely so heartfelt amongst the generation from Gemma, who was three years old, to Sybil, who was 72, all expressing their, their feelings of sadness. And Lord Mayor, who can forget that moment whilst complete shock but joy when Paddington appeared on the scene, not as one of our great orators, I would say, but I think in those three words really summed up where he said, thank you, Mom, for everything. And I think that encapsulated everything we needed to know. I, along with Denise and my two children, went to Buckingham Palace for the garden party and was just blown away of the number of people I actually knew who was there and how many times that garden party per se must have took place. How open must that be for members of the public to have actually partaked in that um, event and across. And that's, I think, over those 70 years, the way the world has changed, how leaders have changed, how times have changed. There was that one anchor in our establishment, and that was the Queen. Thank you, Lord Mayor. God rest the Queen. Thank you very much, Councillor Fox. I will now call on Councillor Shafak Maru, uh, Mohammed, I do apologise, uh, to second the motion. Thank you, Lord Mayor. And Lord Mayor, like Councillor Fox, you know, I've had time to reflect upon the life of Her Majesty the Queen. Like Councillor Fox, she's been an ever constant for most of us in this chamber who have not known another monarch in our lifetime. And for me, she's had a profound effect. I think Councillor Fox has summed it up in terms of some of the tributes and some of those hundreds of people, if not thousands, that have come through the door to sign the Book of Condolence. I can tell you that when I came down with my daughter on Friday, we'd actually run out of paper and there was a queue of people. Uh, and that, for me, showed not just us as a city, but as a country, the love and affection that we have for Her Majesty the Queen. I've had opportunity to speak to a number of friends and colleagues, and I'm sure if Councillor Dan Leak, Councillor, former Councillor, form, former Lord Mayor of Sheffield, Dan Leak was here, she'd probably share with you her experiences. And in particular, what stood out for me in my conversation with Diane was that how Her Majesty the Queen always found time for people, uh, whether it was young and old. Uh, and in particular, Diane recalls how Her Majesty the Queen in two, 2003, I think it was, found time for the families of the service personnel that were there waiting to meet Her Majesty the Queen. And for me, it's been a real shock. We've not known as a family, I'm talking personal now, of anyone else that's, like I said, that's been our monarch. We're from an immigrant background. Her Majesty the Queen has always been respected in our household. And I thought that just was something that my mum and grandma were kind of drilled down into us. But I remember when I returned to Kashmir, Pakistan in 1992, and to walk around the bazaar and the, sh the, the little village area that I'm in, to be taken back by a number of shops I saw with old dusty pictures of Her Majesty the Queen there. And I remember recalling asking uh, one shopkeeper, how come you've got that picture up there? And his response was, she's not just your queen, she's our queen. And we've got utmost respect for her. And I think the other thing that stands out for me in terms of the life of Her Majesty the Queen was how inspirational she was for women. To have a woman at as head of our country and how it inspired people. Uh, and I'm sure, you know, I can talk from my own daughter's experience that how she looks up to her, or looked up to Her Majesty the Queen in terms of how she can, at such a young age, 25, take on the huge responsibilities 
uh, with the passing of her father and the fact that so many more of our young people will have been inspired by Her Majesty the Queen. And she, like you say, there's tributes from all over the world in terms of people who have no doubt at this moment in time, I would say, Lord Mayor, as Her Majesty the Queen's body is now being moved from Buckingham Palace to Westminster Hall, will be there. We as a family are thinking about possibly going down, but we're not sure yet in terms of whether we'll be able to, you know, stand eight, nine hours, particularly given <coughs> some of our medical conditions. But regardless of what we do as a family, I know we as a city will have that utmost respect. And, and I welcome the last bit of this motion, Lord Mayor, where you will be on, on our behalf writing. And I think it's only fitting. And of course, we will now look forward to welcoming our new King, King Charles III to our city because he's not unfamiliar. It's something I remember having my conversation with him about when he asked me about Sheffield. I reminded him of when he came on to the Burton Street project um, and where he, you know, he, he said, I look forward to coming back to Sheffield and I'm sure we will all welcome our new sovereign king as and when he comes. So thank you, Lord Mayor, for giving me the opportunity to speak. And I'm sure the colleagues will say further tributes. Thank you, Councillor Shafak. I'm now going to call upon Councillor Douglas Johnson to say a few words. Um, thank you, Lord Mayor. Uh, this, of course, is Sheffield. And in Sheffield, we know we have some ardent monarchists. We know we have some ardent republicans. It's certainly been a big talking point um, over this last week. But all the views deserve respect. What's astonishing about this is that we haven't done this in the last 70 years. It's been an incredibly long reign of the last queen. And as a result of that, we, almost everyone here, occasional exceptions, almost everyone here has lived their whole lives under the, the, the reign of a, a queen. And it is something where we kind of take for granted sometimes the constitutional, the historical significance of how democracy fits into the, the, the constitution there. But then underpinning this, we're all here in this room because we believe in public service. And of course, what we've been hearing about right across the country um, over the last few days is about the importance of people who put themselves forward for public service when actually they don't need to. So maybe that's something that you know we should ourselves take some credit for um, uh, and actually thank those who do. Um, I just wanted to reflect on that length of time we have here. And I was just thinking about actually my parents-in-law who were old enough and they were actually born as um, British subjects, not British citizens, British subjects of the king. Um, and actually as they still are, unless some um, immigration lawyer will correct me on that, um, they, they will be. And actually in Sheffield, we're in the heart of the country here, but of course we are dealing with a relationship that um, citizens of, of the country and subjects in the country uh, are dealing with um, in many places all over the world. And so there is something kind of unifying about the situation that we're in now. I don't think I need to say any more because I think ultimately what's come out now is this is a way for people to find their own expressions um, of dealing with a situation they don't know about. And maybe it will help people when they have to work through um, deaths that are closer to home of our friends, our family, of people we've worked with um, who've died at an early age. Um, the, the Queen you know, was a, an old woman and had a highly fulfilling life. And um, I'm sure that a lot of people want to thank her for that. But we should also reflect upon ourselves and thank ourselves for the, the service that we bring to uh, ourselves and others. Thank you. Thank you, Douglas. Um, I'm now going to call on Councillor Lewis Chin Chin to say a few words. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, it, it has been a week filled with sadness, um, but also reflection of the life of someone who was an example to us all. Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth is our longest serving monarch, serving for over 70 years, and that's over 70 years of unparalleled public service and dedication. 
Her Majesty said in 1947 that her whole life would be devoted in service, and that is certainly what happened. She performed her duties to the very end, and for that our country will be forever grateful. But it wasn't simply the length of service. It was Her Majesty's clear ability to do the job. Her skill was being able to connect with people from all generations and from all walks of life and from all parts of this United Kingdom. And as Councillor Fox was alluding to, I've heard people in their 20s speak with the same admiration of Queen Elizabeth as people in their 80s. And for the many people who hadn't met Her Majesty personally, that didn't seem to matter. There was still a connection there, sometimes deeply personal. And for vast swathes of the population, that connection is something that cannot always be easily articulated. And nor was that respect confined to our borders. Queen Elizabeth II commanded respect and affection across the globe, both within the Commonwealth and outside it. And that has been seen no more clearly than the tributes we have seen from world leaders over the last week. Very few individuals command that sort of admiration. And it's what made her the ultimate diplomat and head of state. Queen Elizabeth was a truly timeless figure. Someone that has been a constant presence through the good and bad times. And despite the acknowledgement of her length of service, there was still a belief that she would carry on indefinitely, simply because most of us haven't known life without her. And that's what makes this such a sad time. But she will be remembered for all the right reasons. And finally, may Her Majesty rest in peace. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Chinchin. I'm now going to call upon Councillor Gail Smith to add to our memories here. Thank you, Lord Mayor, for giving me this opportunity to speak today. Of course, like everyone, I was... <laughs> How can I put it? It's like your own mother passing away. You think they're going to live forever, and no one lives forever, but I really did think the Queen would be part of our lives for much longer than what she was. I've never met the Queen, but I have met many members of the royal family. But my friend Diane Leake, she did beat the Queen. And I can remember, and those of you that know Diane will, will know, that we were quite worried that she might call her love. But she didn't. And uh, it was only the day after she'd been come Lord Mayor. And she really was pushed in at the deep end. But her memories of, of that visit from the Queen are uh, uh, wonderful to listen to. But for, from my point of view, Lord Mayor, the Queen was an amazing lady, caring, determined, showed every one of us her, her respect, and I believe that we should now do that for her at the end of her days. On the, when the Queen celebrated her 50th wedding anniversary, it was in the year of my mother and father-in-law, and they were invited uh, to Buckingham Palace uh, to be at the garden party. And I've got some amazing photographs of that event. My mother-in-law was so proud of the photograph that she nearly got in with the Queen, but not quite. Also, Lord Mayor, uh, I believe that... Oh, I was going to say, actually, Lord Mayor, that I, I was born a few days after the Queen coronation so I've still got a jubilee teaspoon which has come out of the cupboard and it's now on display in my house. I just want to say on behalf of everybody here and everyone in Sheffield how proud we are to have served underneath her and that she has given us great service. The Queen gave was a, a trailblazer actually for all women not just uh, for women in politics, because I believe that she led the way for people like me. I am so proud to have been uh, able to speak today. So thank you very much.
Thank you, Councillor Smith. And finally, I'm going to call upon Councillor Judy Grocutt. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, last Thursday at half past six, I was in my town council meeting when the dreadful news of the Queen's passing came through. There was a palpable shock in the room that although we all knew that Her Majesty had been ill, although we all knew that she wasn't going to last forever, we couldn't actually comprehend the fact of the information that we were being given. Throughout the weekend, as many of you will have done, I've been to church services, I've been talking to people in my community, and every single person has got a memory of the Queen. Most of them, like myself, have never met her, but we all have memories of the Queen. And the one thing that we all have are very good memories of the Queen. The impression that she left us all with was that we could do better that we could work harder, that we could strive to do more. She was the ultimate public servant, and I think that we all owe her an enormous debt of gratitude for the service that she has given to this country, to the Commonwealth, and to the world. It's, I don't think anyone will ever see the like of it again. I can remember many years ago, as a teenager, coming into Sheffield and climbing over the railings in Fargate because the Queen was here to celebrate her jubilee. And me and my friends, it was a school holidays. We wanted to get the best look at the Queen that we could, even as a teenager. And that was the way that we achieved that. And she turned round and gave us a, wa a wave and a smile. And we were absolutely made up by that. And that is something that even today, I still remember very, very vividly, very, very clearly because she was someone who we did all feel that we knew. She did give us guidance, she did give us comfort. And I think as politicians, what we also all understand is, whenever things were happening in our country that were difficult, that were testing, that our Prime Minister, whoever that may be, would be getting a weekly dollop of common sense from the Queen, that she would be making sure that our voice was heard that we were sure that she would be speaking to the Prime Minister on behalf of us. I'm sure we've all sat and watched the television over the last few days with disbelief, with awe, with pride, with, with upset in terms of what we have seen on the television, um, how the nation has come together, how we have conducted ourselves, how we have behaved during this period of mourning that we are all now in. But for me, um, the most poignant moment was the first um, speech that our new king gave and the final words that he said when he said thank you. And I don't think anyone could really have put it better than our new king did when he said thank you to his mother for her life of dedication um, and service. And I think, you know, we all have happy memories of the Queen. And I hope that people who need to, myself included, can find some comfort in those. So may she rest in peace. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Thank you very much, Councillor Grocutt. And that concludes the debate on this emergency motion. I'm now going to move to a vote on the motion. Is the motion agreed? I will take silence as the affirmation that it is passed. Thank you, everybody. And we're now going to move on to the other parts of our agenda. So, item... Item, sorry, item two is apologies for absence. I've received the following apologies. If I miss anybody, please let me know. Councillor Alexi Diamond, Malachi Haby, Brian Holmshaw, Bernard Little, Ruth Messero, Martin Phipps, Maruf Rauf, Colin Ross, 
and I think we'd all like to send Colin best wishes following his short hospital stay. Anne Woolhouse, Tony Dams, Gary Weatherall, Peter Garbutt, and Sophia Saeed. Is there anybody I've missed? No? Thank you all. Right, item three, are there any declarations of interest? This item of business is to enable members of the council to declare an interest in any item on the agenda. Does any member wish to declare either a personal or disclosable pecuniary interest? None. Okay, we'll move on to item four, which is Lord Mayor's communications and public questions and petitions. So having had the... Apologies, Lord Mayor. Uh, Penny Baker for apologies. Oh, thank you. Penny Baker, thank you very much. Thank you, Jeff. Um, we've had the national uh, morning. We also, in this council, have lost a very dear member of staff last week, which was Kate Sheldon, the member support and civic manager who died on the 29th of August. So I'm going to ask for us to have a minute silence for Kate, and then I will ask for a few former Lord Mayors to give their recollections of Kate. So if I can ask you all to rise for a minute silence for Kate Sheldon. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. I first met Kate over 30 years ago when she became the very junior typist in the office of the then leader of the council, Councillor Clive Betts. And even then, despite Daphne's best efforts, she was a whirlwind of activity and ability. And the fact that that was made plain to everybody else was the fact that when Daphne moved, because she went to work for Clive in London, when they made the new appointment, it wasn't any of the more established people at the council, it was Kate. And it was a bit of a shock to some people that this young whippersnapper had got such an important job but it was because she was good and she was capable and she knew what to do despite what everybody thought was her youth at the time and that's how I always remember her capable organizing the council knowing what to do and telling us in no uncertain terms so I'm going to ask First of all, I'm going to ask Councillor Gail Smith, as the most recent Lord Mayor, to speak about working with Kate, <laughs> its ups and downs. And then I will also ask some of the other former mayors to say something. So, Gail. Thank you, Lord Mayor. 
Well, I met Kate Sheldon th over 30 years ago when I first came onto the council in 1992. And I met her in the corridor one day when I was wondering, wandering around, wondering where things were. And she came out of the ladies and she said, oh, hello. Uh, and I said hello back, of course. She said, uh, have you lost something, lovely? Because that was the sort of person Kate was. If you asked her for anything, she used to say, leave it with me, I'll get back to you. And I can tell you, she did, always. Uh, a wonderful person. And when I became Lord Mayor last year, I can't help saying that I was disappointed that Kate spent very little time in the Lord Mayor's office. And she was surely missed, I can tell you. Kate's job was everything to her. She knew everything about everyone. And it, as Lord Mayor, if you went out and about, when Kate went off sick last year in August and I attended my duties, everyone was asking me, people I didn't even know, how's Kate? How's she going on? Give her our best, you know. Uh, and that's going to carry on for a long time. I have spoken recently to people that I met during my time as Lord Mayor that have been in touch about this, and I have given them details for Monday. Kate was a workaholic, but she was an excellent workaholic. She came into the Lord Mayor's office actually only five years ago. She spent most of her time in the leader's office. And uh, yeah, she, she, she would come in, when I was a, a cabinet member, she'd come in sometimes and tell me off. I'm not gonna tell you what for, but she would. But she was the most helpful, caring person in this town hall. And every single person will miss her. I will. I shed more tears for Kate Sheldon, I have to say. I did feel sad about the Queen, but Kate Sheldon was an amazing woman and she will be surely missed. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Thank you, Gail. Um, oh, the father of the house has his hand up to speak. Peter. Thank you, Lord Mayor. It's not often we get a chance to speak about offices like this, but uh, I'll go back even further than you, you see, because when I was deputy leader, she was... Um, she would act as my secretary, or PA as we call them, not in these days, for a while before she moved into the leader's office in Clive. And um, she was more than an officer, really. She was a friend for most people in here, I guess. Whichever party you came from, she was a friend. Nothing was too much trouble for her. I mean, I well remember, believe it or not, the Labour group used to have a pantomime every Christmas. It was always written by Mike Bauer, the leader, who was brilliant. It was always typed up by Kate. And she'll be here at early hours, of, late at night, and before, just before the she'll still be typing people's parts. That was Kate, committed to, to members all along. Nothing was too much trouble. And even when she was ill, and she was ill, as everybody knows. Nothing, she, I'm, you know me, I've, a, I've a, still got an old council printer at home, I have to get ink. The only person who would get me that ink was Kate, even though she was the Lord Mayor's secretary. Give Kate a ring, and she'd order it for me. That was Kate, committed to this council, committed to Sheffield, not just kept council, by the way, not, not just the council, but people outside. Lots of people in the Chamber of Commerce have so much high praise for the work she's done, keeping them informed and working with them and other groups, uh, retired forces groups. She's been committed to all this. A city, a Sheffield citizen to the end. I think she's been a great loss to this city, a great loss to members, and I shall sadly miss her as a friend as well as a, a workmate. Thanks a lot, Mayor. Uh, Councillor Vicky Priestley. I'm not sure I can add any, any further to that, except to say that uh, at some time over the last 20 years, all of us must have knocked on Kate's door and said, could you fix my phone? Could you fix my computer? And she always did it with grace and dignity. She never had a, a sour face. She always said, oh, it's not, don't worry about it. It's not any trouble. But during Kate's illness, um, I texted her quite a few times, and her friend, former councillor Terry Barrow, um, just said to me one day, uh, do you know anybody that can crochet? And I said, yes, I do. I can. So she said, oh, right, we're going to crochet some elephants then. Can you show me and Kate how to crochet elephants? And I thought, oh, my God. Anyway, she turned up um, 
Terry with this pattern and a, a ball of wool, and she said, this is what we're going to do. So I spent the whole weekend trying to practice this elephant, and it was Kate's dream to make one for her great niece. Unfortunately, Kate um, didn't quite finish it, so I hurried up and finished one uh, for Kate. Um, Terry took it to the hospital, and Kate was absolutely delighted with it. Um, so that's just another lovely memory of Kate, how kind she was, not only to us, but to her family as well, and she'll be sadly missed. Thank you, Councillor Priestley, and finally, Councillor Denise Fox. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, I got to know Kate when I was Lord Mayor. You get, you know, apart from popping in the office and asking her things as a member, um, you got, I got to know her more when I became Lord Mayor and, and her friend. And um, she, if she was here now, she would tell you I was a vain pain in her backside because I said that I've always lost keys for anything. I've lost, key, I've still lost some keys. And I remember I must have lost about four for my locker. And she said, Denise, I haven't got any more. If you lose this, that is it. Whatever's in that locker is it, because I have not got any more. So I've got this one key left, and I don't know what I'm going to do if I lose it. But, but uh, also, she was a character, and she didn't always say yes to me. And I remember um, I got some army cadets that wanted to march around the city. And um, they wanted to come past the the front of the town hall, and there was something going on in the city centre. Uh, and uh, she's saying, Denise, they can't come in front of the, the, the town hall. And I'm saying, but they've got to. They can't be going out back. Nobody can see them. They're going to be marching. And um, we and her were having this debate in the uh, parlour. And uh, we're, we ended up having a shouting match. And I'm going, they are. And she's going, they're not. And I'm saying, they are. <laughs> and in the end... They marched in front anyway and just did what they wanted and they <laughs> didn't listen to me or her, but afterwards it was fine. And the thing that she said afterwards, the reason why she didn't want to, there was some um, band going off and she didn't want it to clash with this. And she's saying they, they're not going to be listened, they won't be heard and nobody's going to watch them because of this band. But when they actually marched, the band stopped, so it wasn't a problem, but... At the time, I can remember having this slanging match. But the other thing I remember, which I remember reminded me and said, when we went to the garden party, our children went. Well, they weren't children. But when we, we just submitted that they could come, they, they, they asked if they, you know, you want to take with you. And we submitted the papers. And then me and her were reading the papers, and it said, under 18. And they both were under 30. And... <laughs> I said, what are we going to do now? We'll be in trouble with the palace. And she went, let's pretend we haven't seen that bit. <laughs> and that was Kate. And, and you know what? They got to go, so perhaps it was as well. So I have many, many members, and I'm sure we all have uh, many memories of Kate. But, yeah, she'll be lost. Thank you. Everybody here will have a memory of Kate, even new members, um, a formidable woman, and as somebody who bore her final illness with enormous grace, with enormous cheerfulness, and I spoke to her only two weeks ago, and I just didn't expect this to happen, because Kate just kept saying, she'll be okay, I'll be back, I'm just looking at this for you. And it was such a shock when we knew that this indomitable woman wasn't going to be back with us. Now, I'm just going to say that she has, or her family have asked for donations in lieu of flowers for Western Park Hospital. And I believe the whips in each group are going to be collecting from you. So I'd be very grateful if we all make sure that we give over a good son in memory of Kate. Thank you all. Okay, we will now move on to petitions and public questions. 
Public questions can be asked and petitions can be presented at council meetings. As the chair of the committee, of this meeting, sorry, I have discretion as to how questions and petitions are presented at the meeting and as to whether members of the public are invited to ask their questions or present their petitions at the meeting. We encourage questions or petitions to be submitted two clear days in advance of the meeting. For this meeting, we have received questions from three members of the public and have received one ordinary petition. We also have an item on the agenda to debate a petition relating to the Graves Park Rose Garden Cafe building. On this occasion, while we are in the national period of mourning, I have decided not to invite petitioners to present their petitions or questioners to ask their questions, nor to invite relevant policy committee chairs to respond at the meeting. Questioners will be supplied with written answers and the questions and the answers will be published on the web page for this meeting. The questioners and petitioners have been made aware of this and I thank them for their understanding. So for the record, Geoffrey Cox submitted questions relating to the council's plans to reduce its carbon emissions and Councillor Mazrikbal, co-chair of the Transport Regen and Climate Policy Committee, has provided a written answer for this. Rob Udale submitted questions relating to the Council's food policy and the serving of plant-based food at its events. Again, Councillor Maza Iqbal, co-chair of the Transport Regen and Climate Policy Committee, has provided a written answer and as I said these will be published on the website for everybody to be able to see. Lily Grayson has submitted a petition containing seven signatures requesting the council to provide a pedestrian crossing on Cross Hill, Ecclesfield. I propose that the petition be referred to the Transport Regen and Climate Policy Committee. Is that agreed? I will take silence as the affirmation of the meeting. Thank you, members. The second petition asking the council to repair, not demolish, Rose Garden Cafe in Graves Park, which was to have been debated under item 4B on the agenda, will now be debated at the next council meeting to be held on 2nd of November. This was the lead petitioner's preference, subject to receiving assurances that no decisions about the cafe would be made, either official or unofficial, until that date. The Assistant Director of Legal and Governance has provided that assurance to the lead petitioner, and I will just read you piece from his letter so that you all know and we can put this into the public record. I can assure you that no decision on the future of the cafe building will be made before you have had a chance to present your petition on 2nd of November. In that decision, in that period, there may be decisions made on temporary cafe provision as per the decision published, which is on our democracy pages. In addition, there may be day-to-day -day operational decisions made in relation to the safety of the building, including agreeing access with the operator. If it becomes necessary to make a decision earlier than 2nd of November, for example, for safety reasons, then we will contact you to ensure you have the opportunity to present the petition at an appropriate meeting prior to that decision. We also received a question this morning from James Martin regarding the ability of local area committees to support residents during the cost of living crisis. A written answer will be supplied and published as for the other questions received. And what we will do is refer it to the regular meeting of LAC chairs 
which I believe is chaired overall by Councillor Mary Lee. And we will ask the LAC chairs to consider the question which has been submitted and report their findings to the leader so that it can be formally given to both the questioner and to this council meeting. Yeah. Sorry, point of order, Lord Mayor. I'm not sure the LAC chairs is a, is a properly constituted committee of this council that is able to receive that. Yes, please. Yeah, you're correct, um, Councillor Alton, it's not. Um, although the LACs report directly into full council, um, in, it was thought more appropriate for the LAC chairs to have a say in how the council responded to this. So by referring it to the chair of chairs effectively, um, we can then, that can then be fed into the leader of the council and can be reported back to, it can be answered that way. Thank you for your forbearance, Joe. And that concludes this item of business. We now move to item six, five, members' questions. And this is questions on urgent business. We've had no questions of urgent business. Um, on the questions to the joint authorities, we are going to make the same provision. If anybody here has a question to any of the South Yorkshire Joint Authorities for Fire and Rescue and Pensions and the South Yorkshire Mayoral Combined Authority, please can you put your question into the committee secretariat by the end of the day and this will be referred to the appropriate member representing us on one of those bodies. Thank you. Um, supplementary questions, written answers from the Leader of the Council and Policy Committee Chairs to questions submitted by questions in advance of the meeting have been emailed to all members and circulated at this meeting. On this occasion, I shall not provide an opportunity for members to ask supplementary questions. Uh, instead, I'm going to move on to the next item of business. The four mo notices of motion published on the agenda, which were items 6, 7, 8 and 9, are to be withdrawn. Council Procedure Rule 17.11 brackets A brackets, withdrawal of motion or amendment brackets, states that a member may withdraw motion or amendment which he or she has moved or given notice of with the consent of both the meeting and the seconder. No member may speak on the motion after the mover has asked permission to withdraw it unless permission is refused. So I would like to now, I, I will also say that any motions which are withdrawn today may be submitted to future meetings of the council if the movers so choose. So agenda item six, notice of motion regarding cost of living crisis, national failings and a local response, which was given by Councillor Nabila Malana and was to be seconded by Councillor Abtisam Mohammed. Councillor Malana, will you formally withdraw? Yes, please, Lord Mayor. Thank you. And Councillor Abtisam Mohammed? Yes, please, Lord Mayor. Thank you. Is that agreed by the meeting? Thank you. Item seven, notice of motion regarding best value services for the people of Sheffield, which was to be proposed by Councillor Mike Levery and to be seconded by Councillor Joe Otten. Uh, Councillor Levery, may I ask you to formally withdraw the motion? Thank you. And Councillor Otten, can I ask you to formally remove your seconding? Uh, yeah, Thank you. Um, and is that agreed by the meeting? Thank you. Item eight, notice of motion regarding a renewable energy strategy for Sheffield was to be given by Councillor Christine Gilligan-Kubo and was to be seconded by Councillor Douglas Johnson. 
uh, Councillor Gilligan Kubo. Thank you very much. Oh, no, it's, oh, it's Abdi Sam. Have you got your mic still on? Sorry, Christine, would you like to do that again? Yeah, request to withdraw the motion, Lord Mayor. Thank you. And Councillor Johnson, can you formally request? Formally request it, thank you. And item nine, notice of motion regarding committing the council to tackling the stigma of menopause and period poverty, which was to be given by Councillor Jane Dunn and seconded by Councillor Julie Grovecutt. Uh, Councillor Dunn. Formally withdrawn, Lord Mayor. And Councillor Grocutt. Can I formally remove, Lord Mayor? Thank you. Is that agreed by members? Thank you. Item 10, appointment of independent office uh, members. No, appointment of independent persons. This item of business is to approve the recommendation in the report of the Director of Legal and Governance, published with the agenda for this meeting, to appoint David Waxman and Karen Widdison for a four-year term as the two independent persons to assist the Council's monitoring officer in considering complaints that a member may have breached the Councillor Code of Conduct. The motion to approve the recommendation in the report is to be moved by Councillor Diane Hurst and seconded by Councillor Joe Otten. Councillor Hurst. Formally moved, Lord Mayor. Thank you. Councillor Otten. I'm formally seconded, Lord Mayor. Thank you. I'm now going to vote, move to a vote on the motion. I will take silence as the affirmation of the meeting. May I have your... Right, that is agreed. The motion is carried unanimously. Thank you, members. Our next item is item number 11, proper officer designations. This item of business is to approve the recommendations in the report of the Executive Director of Resources, published with the agenda of this meeting, to appoint officers to two statutory roles, the Director of Children's Services and the Monitoring Officer. The motion to approve the recommendations in the report is to be moved by Councillor Diane Hurst and seconded by Councillor Joe Otten, though we could do it the other way round. Councillor Otten. Seconded, Lord Mayor. And Councillor... Hurst. Formally seconded, Lord Mayor. All right, it's been seconded twice. I'm in a complete procedural conundrum. Okay. <laughs> Can I ask uh, all members... Um, I'm sorry, I'm now going to move the motion. Can I take the silence as the assent of the meeting? Thank you. Right, item 12, minutes of previous council meetings. It's proposed that the minutes of the annual meeting of the council held on the 18th of May and the ordinary meetings of the council held on the 1st of June and 20th of July 2022 be approved as true and accurate records. Is this motion formally moved? Councillor Diane Hurst. Formally moved, Lord Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Hurst. And uh, is it formally seconded? Formally seconded. Thank you very much. So uh, our next item is item 13, memberships of council bodies and representatives to serve on other bodies, um, which you should all have had. Have you all had it? It should have been 
thank you, table for you all. Lord Mayor, so, I ooh. need to raise um, item 10, changes to memberships on, of council committees. I need to raise uh, a matter on this when we get to the plenary agenda. We're, we're now on item 13, Councillor Hurst, so would you like to give your amendments? I will do, Lord Mayor, and I apologise for um, flitting about the chamber on, on this day. Um, there is an item um, on D um, that has not been agreed with the individual or notified to the individual concerned, and I would request that it would be removed. I object to that item being included and I uh, request that it would be removed. Right, so let me be clear. You're saying that the Chair of the Waste and Street Scene Policy Committee should not be appointed to serve as the Sheffield City Council Board Member on the Sheffield Business Improvement District Board, is that right? I'm asking for that at this meeting, Lord Mayor. I'm asking for that portion to be deferred to a future meeting until um, we've had a chance to look at the item in governance and discuss the item. I'm going to listen to Paul. Okay. Um, the advice I've just received is that we withdraw this item, but that, that is subject to being able to revisit it with officers using their delegated powers in order to be able to conclude it properly. Joe. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I think I was advised earlier that it had to be a decision of council and couldn't be done in delegated powers, which is why it came to then and the point has not been made before today. Um, I, you know, I, I offer my apologies to Councillor Iqbal, he wasn't informed. And there was a, a, there's a long email thread which I have in front of me uh, where this was based on um, advice from legal, um, based on the interpretation of, the, of the, the, the roles that exist now compared to the roles that existed when the, the, the bid appointment was first stated. And the advice was very clearly that the chair of Waste and Street Seed was the most appropriate um, and would be an excellent choice, I'm sure, whoever he is. Um, <laughs> Uh, and that the, the, the chair of TRC was not the, was, was not the corresponding relevant person compared to the original um, uh, the original appointment. So therefore, the, the advice was very clear from legal that it should be the chair of Waste and Street Scene taking this position. Um, I, I've looked at through the emails again, and the um, um, one well, of the officers said, is, "Is this agreed?" And should the matter be informed? And I, I replied, "Yes, I'm happy for for, for Councillor Iqbal to be informed." Um, and I think, I think there was probably that, the, the, that part of the chain ends at that point. So I think there was some ambiguity as to who, who, who should have done that. So that's the, well, how that problem's arisen. So uh, my apologies for that. Um, you know, that obviously that, that should have been handled better. But as far as I'm concerned, this is a, this is a you know, a, a straightforward appointment under legal advice uh, that should be made. And, uh, you know, if, if the advice is now that this can be done under dele delegated powers, and quickly, then I'll be happy with that. But otherwise, um, I would suggest the appointment is made. Thank you. For, for whoever is chosen. For whoever is chosen. Yeah. And um, well, the, the advice is pretty clear as to who is who has to be chosen. <laughs> you, sorry, you alluded to it. Whoever it might be would be a fine person. So I was just. Uh, mm. um, Right, I'm going to take, hang on, I'm going to take a two-minute break while our legal people discuss what this is, Joe, so that we can do it properly, okay? <laughs> 